Hello, everybody. It's about that time. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Well, I told you we were going to get into sours before too long. We're not going to do the sour week until I come back from my little trip uh, to Florida here coming up uh, uh, on the uh, 16th or 17th. We're going to head out for a couple of weeks. Uh, and like I told you the other day, there's not going to be any beer reviews while I'm gone. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to take a break. Just like I did when I went to California last year. I'm going to take a little two-week siesta, guys. So, this one comes from uh, New Glarus. This is their Thumbprint Series Enigma. And what that is, is a sour red slash brown ale. So, uh, another attempt to get into the sour beers for me, since I haven't quite got grasped my arms around that style of beer yet. Uh, this is a 5.5 percenter, according to Rate Beer and Beer Advocate. It does not have it printed on the bottle, and I don't understand why they do not. Come on, guys. Put the ABV on the bottle. I mean, uh, it's not that hard to do. Print it on the label because evidently it's the same year after year. And uh, I'm not seeing any dating on here. Uh, this bottle was sent to me by Iwan and, uh, and Vasi. And he put a little tag on there with uh, where he got the date from, where I don't have any idea whether he bought a six-pack and had it on there or bought a case or how he found out. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I don't think I have any additional information. Uh, let's see. It'll be on there. I put a tag on them and they say, I'm going to buy a book. And then on the marshmallow, and I want to make sure you get any and all day. So a couple of smudged off, and a couple of smudged off, and I wrote them on a tag also. So uh, where he got that information, whether he got it off of another bottle or a six pack, I have no idea. But he did have a tag on it. This one was one twenty two fifteen January twenty second of twenty fifteen, uh, and here we are in uh, the beginning of April, uh, the first week of April anyway. The, the uh, commercial description on this, I don't have the IBUs listed for this, says a few times a year we will cut Dan loose to brew whatever he chooses, uncensored, uncut, unplugged. Always handcrafted, this beer is brewed for the adventurous soul. This is a very limited edition and we make no promises to ever brew this style again. A complex and intriguing original, the mystery began with wild yeast spontaneously fermenting a rich treasure of malted barley and cherries. Unlined oak casts breathe deep vanilla hues and cords of smoke into the sour brown ale. Our master brewer has forged a smooth garnet tapestry that defines, defies subscription. Wander off the beaten path. So... We'll see what this one brings here, guys. Uh, let's see here. Let's go over to the commercial, I mean the uh, food pairings. It says uh, the food pairings are the cheeses are earthy, Camembert Fontina, and the meat is uh, grilled meat. Is grilled meat. Glass bar of flute, sniffer, a tulip. I'm using the Sauvin beer glass. The uh, beer, it says, can be sold for long periods under the proper conditions, but for five and a half percenter, I would not recommend that. Uh, you might get six months on this if you're lucky. So that's just my opinion. There might be people say, oh, I'll sell this beer for five years. I wouldn't want to be drinking a five and a half percenter after that long a time. So we'll see what this one brings. Uh, not usually too hip on uh, on cellaring beers seven percent less than seven percent for any long periods of time. Uh, to me, it'd be like taking a Budweiser trying to keep it for five years and then trying to drink it. Wouldn't doesn't appeal to me at all. Well, neither one of that an old Budweiser or a new Budweiser appeals to me at all. <laughs> uh, all right, we've gone through the uh, the food pairings and we've gone through the commercial description. 
Only thing left to do is to go through the bottle and drink the beer. So let's get the cap off this puppy and see how sour and tart this brown ale is. Nice little hiss, a little bit of smoke. aggressive pour. Keep hearing car doors slamming out there, but I don't see nobody out there. About a finger of head on that pour, guys. Good looking beer. It is a rich, a ruby red color. I can see the bulb uh, through it just barely. It's not cloudy, but it is a deep red color. Deep red head and hue to this uh, beer here. Well, let's get a nose on it and see what we got. Sour beer. And it smells pretty sour. I'm getting cherries and raspberries. There is some maltiness to it, but I'm not getting any of that oakiness yet. It smells very tart. Sour and tart. As you can see, the head has dissipated just barely now covering the beer. So let's give this a taste and see if it's going to make my mouth pucker up. I'm pretty sure it's going to. Thanks, Massey. Cheers to uh, you and your brother, uh, Iwan. I do appreciate it, sirs. Mm, here we go. Oh, yeah. It's very tart. Some people say it's not too tart. To me, it's tart. That's a tart beer to me. Somebody that drinks a lot of sours would probably say that's not a tart beer, but it is tart to me. Maybe it's an entry level tart beer. I'm not really sure. I don't. I'm not. I'm not drank enough dark beers or sour beers to know which ones are are good tart or bad tart or anything like that, guys. And this was sent to me. I did not buy that. Uh, tart and sour beers is not usually my forte, but I'm trying to get my arms around this style of beer, guys. But as I told you before on several of the other reviews that I have done a couple of uh, these style beers. I did not like tart candy as a child uh, or anything sour, I mean, any sour candy or anything like that as I was growing up. I just didn't care for that style of candy. Uh, I like the sweet stuff. Stuff that make you real fat. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm not getting any of the oakiness uh, from the... Uh, cask or anything. I'm just getting raspberries, dark cherries, sour and tartness in the beer. Makes, it, makes my mouth pop every time I take a drink. Well, let me take it back and let, let her have a sip or two of it. It'll pucker her mouth up too and uh, we'll uh, come back here and do the final chug and grain on it. I don't know if I would want this beer to come up to room temperature or sip on this for 45 minutes or an hour. This kind of beer to me seemed like it would be better chilled than room temperature. Sort of like a lager uh, would be to me. But I might be wrong. Just my opinion. So we'll see. I'll be right back and we'll do the final chugging right on this one, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. I just a little left. <laughs> Wish y'all could have seen her face. I took it in there. She didn't have any idea. I didn't tell her what it was. Handed it to her. She smelled it and gave me one of those looks and took a drink and she went, same face that I made, guys. <laughs> then she, it's pretty tart for somebody that don't drink sour beers. Uh, I've read that some, some people don't think this is a tart beer, but it's pretty tart to me. Somebody that don't drink a lot of sours or tart beers. So uh, uh, I've been sipping on it probably about 20, 25 minutes or so now. Uh, there is a little bit of the oakiness in there from the from the cast they put this in now that it's warmed up a little bit. But the dark cherries and the uh, 
uh, raspberries uh, stand out more than anything to me. Uh, kind of fruity, but very tart to somebody that doesn't drink the style of beer very much. So let's do the final chug here, guys. The last sip is better than the first sip, I will say that. It's just that, that initial shock <laughs> when you take your first drink. And it, it, it's, wow. But like I said, I'm trying to grasp, get my arms around this style of beer, guys. And this was pretty good. I mean, uh, it, it, it wasn't overly tart, I don't guess I would say. Of course, I haven't had a lot of them, and uh, I've got uh, quite a few in, in the refrigerator now, uh, especially the ones that's been sent to me from Russian River, and I plan on doing those when I get back from vacation. Uh, I think it's pretty tasty. Uh, like I said earlier, I would like to see him put the ABV on the bottle so you'll know what you're drinking. Uh, and he did send me a, uh, the little tag saying what, uh, where it was done. Now that the beer is out of it, I can see uh, 0225. And what that would mean would be the 22nd day of 2015. So it's on here, and I know what that code means. But I could not see it with the beer in the bottle. So it's written in black digitized right here on the neck, or right below the neck on the, the curved part of the bottle here. So the 22nd day of January of 2015 was when this was done. Decent beer. Uh, uh, the only thing I fuss about is not having the ABB on, on the bottle, so we don't know how, how strong a beer we're drinking. But uh, other than that, guys, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I would probably give this an 8 anyway. Uh, I'm sure it's a very well-made beer. Uh, it's got the date on it, uh, if you know how to read the code. And uh, nice entry-level tart beer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, nice sour. I uh, don't know if I so much as a brown ale. That may be the base. Uh, for the beer, but it's uh, like it said in the commercial description, it's open fermented, uh, uh, very limited edition, wild yeast spontaneously fermenting. So, uh, not bad, not bad. Like I said, uh, the last sip was uh, better than the first one. So, uh, eight for me, guys, and over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 93 in their outstanding range, which is pretty good. I do, that's an, that's an A, pretty close to where I would put it, the numeric rating. And over to uh, uh, Rate Beer, Rate Beer says overall 99 and 94 in style. So good numbers from everybody all around. So uh, I, I think it was it was decent. Uh, I need to grasp my arms around the style a bit more, and I plan to try that when I get back. We'll do some of these Russian River beers I've got in there and, uh, and see what they bring. Some of them have some really good ratings and uh, good reviews on those. So hopefully they, they won't be too tart and uh, it won't, won't make me make too strange a face when I, when I do the first initial sip and ch uh, sip on the beer when I, when I review it. But all right, guys, uh, that's all i got to say about this one. If you've had this one from New Glarus Brewing, this is their Thumbprint Enigma. Let me know what you think, guys. Uh, let's see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.